joining our spooky recall tonight. My name is Sharla Stewart. I am the family camping chair at council. Uh, with me tonight, I have Charity Drabik, who is the pro program director at council. And I also have Jamie Smith, who is in charge of logistics for the uh, family camping committee. And uh, we wanna thank you all for taking the time to jump on our call tonight. We encourage you guys to ask questions in the chat and uh, we will get to those uh, towards the end. So if you have any questions, just, just type them in the chat for us and we will get to them. Um, I am gonna turn it over to Miss Charity for a moment for a safety moment. Hey guys, so the most important thing that you need to remember about camping, if you do not already know this, is fire safety. Muted. Hold on. Sorry, I got muted. Uh, the most important thing about um, safety is no fire in your tent. That means no heating elements of any kind should be in your tent. Um, the, they can create fumes that will um, cause you to stop breathing, you know, monoxide poisoning and that type of thing. So no flames or no heat sources in your tent. Um, if it gets cooler at night, just bring some extra top of your sleeping bag and you guys will be comfy. Um, the other thing to remember is we are Halloween and you are encouraged to dress up and wear your costumes in your campsite, but they are or can be flammable. So make sure you're careful around your campsites with that. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Sharla. Thank you, Ms. Charity. So I know everybody's super excited. We have three weekends of Spooky Read at Burt Adams and the theme at Burt Adams this year is Adventure on the High Seas. We also added one weekend at Woodruff this year and the theme at Woodruff is Adventures in Space. So it's a choose your adventure type of weekend. Um, figure out the dates and places that work for you and go ahead and get signed up if you haven't done that already. So the purpose of fall family camping is to strengthen families through scouting. We provide an, a fun outdoor experience for both for Cub Scouts and their families. Although some of the activities that we do at uh, camp do count for advancement, the primary focus of camp is fun in the outdoors. So I know everybody's very curious about some of the steps that we're taking this year, and I'm not going to lie to you, Spooky Re is going to look very different than it has in years past. Um, we, are, we have thought long and hard, and we are taking a lot of safety precautions to keep you guys safe while you're on campgrounds. The first thing that's gonna, you're going to notice that's different this year is you're going to have a health screening upon entry. We're going to ask you a series of questions and um, make sure that you haven't, you and nobody in your, your group have been feeling ill or that you've had a fever or any of those things. Uh, because obviously if the answer is yes to any of those, we want you to turn around and go home. Uh, this year, um, we're gonna have strictly scheduled program activities. Typically in the past, Spooky Re has kind of been a free for all. And you just walked around and participated in the activities when you wanted to participate in them. Uh, this year, it's gonna be much more structured and so we're dividing everyone into small groups of approximately 25 people. These small groups are going to camp together. They're going to travel from activity to activity together, and they're going to participate in the activities together. These small groups are not going to co-mingle with other small groups, and so it, it's just going to be you and your small group at each program activity, um, and there's going to be a rotation schedule, and you'll rotate, I think it's every 45 minutes or something like that. Um, another thing that you'll notice is that the trading post is going to be closed, which I know makes everyone sad, but you don't have to be too sad because we're going to hand out a QR code to you when you arrive on campgrounds and you can actually order um, certain select items from the trading post and we will deliver it to your campsite at some point throughout the weekend. Uh, program activities and materials are going to be sanitized between each group, each small group. 
and we have dedicated staff for keeping the bathhouses clean. We'll have sanitation stands located throughout camp with plenty of hand sanitizer. Uh, face coverings are required. The dining hall is going to be closed. We're encouraging everyone to um, cook their own meals in their campsites. On Saturday night, we are offering a boxed meal option, which we'll talk a little bit more about a little bit later. Um, you'll notice, obviously, there's not going to be any camp-wide ceremonies. So no opening or closing flag ceremonies, no um, uh, campfire, excuse me, that's the word I was searching for, and uh, no interfaith cer ceremony. That just simply means that we're not going to do a large mass gathering. That doesn't mean that you can't do it in your campsite. In fact, we encourage you to do them in your campsite. Um, we've put together a binder of materials for our small group leaders. And in this binder, you'll are some uh, sample ceremonies and some ideas for skits and songs that you can do um, in your campsites. I know everyone looks forward every year to the Haunted Trail in the costume parade at Burt Adams. Um, for safety reasons this year, obviously we cannot do that. However, we hope to make up for it by offering a pirate hayride. And that is only going to be at Burt Adams. However, at Woodruff, since there is no pirate hayride, we are having an astronomy program in the evenings on Saturday. Uh, program activities are limited to outdoor areas and pavilions this year. We will not be utilizing any of the buildings for program. And as I talked about earlier, we're introducing small groups. And these small groups, again, are going to um, stay together and not commingle with other small groups. So we, we're doing this solely to limit interaction uh, between the various people while you're at camp. Um, obviously, the less interaction that you have with other people, the safer you're going to be. And so that's why we're trying to limit that for you. Additional options. We have some awesome Spooky Re t-shirts that you can purchase um, through Tentaroo uh, during registration, or you, there's going to be a select number uh, available first come first serve through the QR code trading post ordering. Again, the dining hall is gonna be closed for the entire weekend. You should plan on cooking your meals and in your campsite. And Charity, can you tell me, is the sample meals and ingredients up on the website yet? Uh, yes, it is. So Miss Jamie took the time to put together a sample menu for you for the weekend, and it lists out instructions and ingredients. So um, all you have to do is go shopping and then put it together when you get to camp. And that is available on the website. Saturday program activities. I'm really excited about this. We've put in a lot of work to put together a, um, some great themed activities for you. So we have a lot of pirate themed activities at BERT and a lot of space themed activities at Woodruff. Um, again, small groups will participate in the activities according to their rotation schedule. Uh, we are asking parents and leaders within the small groups to help assist with the program activities. Um, we are very limited in the amount of staff that we have this year, and so there will not be staff manning each station as there was in prior years. Uh, we'll make sure there's a big board with instructions up for you so you know exactly how to run each activity. And um, once you're done with each activity, uh, we'll have um, sanitation supplies there for you, you know, a sprayer with sanitizing spray if you can just spray down the program materials before you leave. And lastly, we're asking that all participants bring a bag lunch for Saturday. Uh, that, the reason for that being is that you're going to be eating in the location of your last program activity. So if your last program activity before lunch was uh, shooting sports, then when, you're, when your shooting sports uh, period is over, then you're gonna sit down in the grass and you're gonna eat your bag lunch. Uh, nobody goes back to the campsites. And again, that is to make sure that we're limiting interaction of people as they travel around camp. In addition to the scheduled program activities that we have on Saturday, we have some additional activities. Um, you're gonna be spending more time in your campsite than you have in years past. 
and by design. Um, so we're going to provide uh, your small group leader with some additional activity supplies, some arts some crafts, some games, um, s'more supplies, and um, that binder, that magical binder that I spoke about earlier with instructions on how to do everything will be there as well. And so you can uh, take part in these activities with, during your downtime at your campsites. And again, hold your, definitely still hold your ceremonies. Uh, still have a flag ceremony, still have a campfire, just do it in your own individual campsite. I'm going to turn it over to Miss Jamie now so she can talk to you about arrival and check-in. All right, so participants, we are asking, participants, we are asking that you arrive at 6 p.m. Uh, the front gate will be remaining closed. Um, which means we've had in the past people want to try and arrive early so they can get their camp set up and everything and get ready to go and then they can relax the rest of the night which i get but unfortunately due to covid uh we have to give health screenings before you enter into the actual campsite areas and activity areas so that's why we're asking you to not arrive until 6 p.m and we will check each car in and do the health check as you come in um, to the campground. So please do not arrive. Please let all of your participants know not to arrive before this time. Um, let's see, our, our parking passes this year will basically help us to uh, give information for camp masters and rangers and stuff like that on it about you. So if there's a problem, we can get a hold of you. Um, you're not actually going to be assigned to a exact parking lot like Emerson or Corman this year. Um, you can park in whatever parking lots closest to you, um, but that parking pass to say needs to stay in your window because we need that information at our fingertips to be able to get a hold of you if need be. Um, rosters, we do ask that you submit your roster uh, ahead of time if possible. Uh, and then if not, we will have somebody come by on Friday night after a while and come by and try to collect rosters from all the campsites. So if you're not able to get it to us in advance, we'd ask that you have that ready for us when we arrive uh, at your campsite. Uh, Friday night, we really do ask that once you get in, you get settled and then go move your car because all cars need to be out of the campsites by nine. Um, we ask you to stay in your camp, you know, try not to wander around, let the kids run around. Uh, we really are trying to limit the amount of interaction between different groups. So that way um, we can keep, you know, the, the keep everything close knit. So we don't have any worries about anything spreading. Next, Charlotte. All right, parking, always fun topic. I know everybody loves parking. <laughs> Um, so, like I said, this the sign just needs to stay in your window. It's so that we know how to get a hold of you. Um, only park in those parking lots um, that are closest to you. No parking on the roads. No parking in the campsite itself. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, try to make your loading and unloading time as quick as possible so the next person can get in. Um, let's see if. Uh, if we do see somebody that's in, in properly parked, we are going to have our camp masters come around and they will talk to you about that and making sure that everybody's being safe and that the, the property's being well taken care of and that people aren't, you know, damaging it due to parking in wrong places. So they will help us with that. Um, we definitely it's always said please make sure that those roads that travel through the campsites those gravel roads stay clear um we you know may have to get an emergency vehicle through there and if you guys are trying to park there because it's closer than the parking lot you're making it tough for an emergency vehicle to get to maybe your campsite or the campsite near you because there's an emergency there you know so we don't want to have that happen please make sure you park in parking lots. All right, medical forms, they need to be brought with you and you can hang on to them uh, at your campsite. Uh, every person who is attending is required to have an A and B 
parts of their medical form plus the front and back of the uh, insurance card with them. Um, we uh, have a health lodge at uh, both locations, and we will uh, have somebody available for emergency purposes, um, but they don't need to Um, if there's an emergency, we will need to have them brought to the health lodge, okay? But hang on to them in your campsite, okay, with you. Saturday arrivals. So for those that can't make it Friday night, we understand that, you know, some people can't and do to work or whatever, and they need to come Saturday morning, and that is quite all right, not a problem. Um, just note that we ask that, um, that they don't travel in onto the gravel to the campsites uh, between eight and five only because you know we do have everybody traveling moving through camp and in groups together and we just don't want anybody to get hurt so if they stick to the main paved roads go to the parking lot park there um, check in at the camp office and then grab their stuff and they can hike it to their campsite or they can wait until after programming's done to move their stuff, that'd be great. We just want to keep everybody as safe as possible um, and less traveling around the camp in a vehicle is, is best, okay? Um, definitely note that when you they do arrive Saturday morning that there will be somebody um, that will direct them to where their cohort is. Um, so if you are not going to carry your stuff over to the camp, I would recommend that you leave it in your car, check in at the office, we will tell you where your group is and head straight to your group and then finish everything up. Then at that point, it's probably best then to go ahead at the end of the programs to go ahead and get your stuff and go to camp. Um, just try to lessen the interaction around camp between people. Range, okay, so this is the fun part. Everybody loves doing the shooting sports. Um, they are going to be, the range times are built into your small group rotation. So your small group leader uh, will have in their binder the rotation list of when they're supposed to be at each activity. And the range times are in there. And so you will just go in a, you know, your circle and do your range time when it comes up. The safety briefing this year is going to be done at the range when it is your range time. So the range master will go over your safety briefing information and then you will shoot. Um, and now this is going to include, as you see, the BBs, uh, the rubber band guns are there for the lions and the archery and the slingshots. And so they're all right there together on the volleyball field to make it easy. Youth protection. Uh, Charlotte, would you like to talk about that? I would love to. Love to. <laughs> All right. So as with any scout event, we need to practice youth protection. We need to make sure everyone around us is practicing youth protection. That includes too deep leadership at all times, no one-on-one -on -one contact, respect of uh, everyone's privacy, separate accommodations. If you have any questions about the appropriate uh, accommodations for, for your family or your unit, feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, and always, always, always use the buddy system. No scout travels alone. So if your scout needs to use the restroom, he needs to take a buddy to the restroom. <laughs> Speaking of restrooms, <laughs> Most of the restrooms at both camps now are individual stalls, so they can be used by any age or gender. The bathrooms that are not set up that way will be clearly labeled as uh, either youth or adult, male or female. We need your help to ensure that the uh, separate restrooms are being maintained and um, that everybody is using the proper restroom. So if you happen to see somebody using the wrong one, gently point them to the correct one. Um, and um, youth protection is everyone's job. And so if you see something, say something. Um, make sure your youth and your families are using the correct facilities and adhering to all youth protection standards. 
emergency procedures. Ms. Jamie, do you want to talk about that or do you want me to talk about that? Mm -hmm. uh, it's fine. I can talk about it. Uh, so you have a, a lost person. Always make sure that you check the surrounding areas and, you know, immediately go contact, you know, the camp directors, the rangers, or the camp masters immediately. Um, we have a protocol in place that we do to make sure that, you know, we find this individual in a timely fashion. Um, so please do not hesitate or wait to tell us about this. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, bad things can happen if, if you think you can find them on your own and you don't tell any one of us, you know, we're, we're there to make sure that the camp is safe at all times. That is our job. So please let us know immediately if you um, have a lost member of your group. Okay. Uh, severe weather. Uh, it, it happens a lot <laughs> and uh, um, all of our camp activities. Um, well, we'll have a, a sound system that will go off. Um, you'll hear like a high low or a warbling siren sound. Um, you'll be instructed to go to immediate shelter. That is a hard top shelter, meaning, you know, like a pavilion or a building um, would be preferred, you know, not your tents. Uh, please don't do that. You know, not the little huts that your firewood sits in you know, get to a good hard topped shelter area, preferably a building um, would be preferred. Now, um, you might wonder because we're not having programs in buildings, are they gonna be open? We will have some open in case of emergency if weather's looking like it could get um, severe, then we will make sure that there are locations for you to go to that they are unlocked. But if there isn't, then we will have those buildings locked up since we won't have program in them. Um, there will be a single blast from the siren to let us know when it is all clear. Um, we even might have, you know, somebody come over the intercom system over the camp and let you know that everything is clear. You can resume activities. Thank you, Ms. Jamie. Uh, before we move on, we had some people join us uh, after I said this, so I wanted to say it again. If you have any questions throughout this uh, presentation, you can feel free to type that into the chat and we will get to that at the end. So uh, feel free to take advantage of that. Communication while you're at camp. Mostly you should be going through your small group guide. The small group guide will have means of communication with all of the camp staff. Oops, excuse me. I got a little uh, too excited there. So um, your, your primary source of communication should be your small group guide. We're also going to be setting up a remind, well, it's already set up. So you can text AAC Spooky to 81010 to join that remind group. And we'll utilize that while you're at camp with any updates or changes or any important information that we need to get out to you guys. Um, and we love pictures. We, we wanna strongly encourage you to post your pictures from being at camp. Show everybody that we're putting the outing back in scouting and um, um, use those uh, at symbols to uh, post your pictures. Cool weather and rain camping. So Spooky Re, as with all family camping events, is a rain or shine event. That means that we need to follow the guide to safe scouting for cold weather camping. It's, um, you know, I'm not sure if this is a false fall that we're going through right now or if this is actual fall, but the weather's starting to get a little cooler, so make sure that you're coming prepared. I want to mention um, that closed-toed shoes are required. It'll help keep your toes warm, but it'll also help keep your feet safe as well. Pets. Um, I love pets. However, they don't belong at camp. The only type of animal that is allowed at camp is a registered service animal. If you are going to be bringing your registered service animal, please let Veronica know prior to camp. Um, please do not just show up with a service animal. We need to know ahead of time. Smoking. If you gotta do it, the only appropriate space is behind the dining halls at both camp. Uh, this includes vapes, cigars, chewing tobacco. 
um, use of tobacco in any other area will result in dismissal from the camp property. Miss Jamie, can you cover some uh, miscellaneous camp rules for us? Sure, I'd love to. All right, so these are the fun things, right? So no throwing rocks, sorry. Um, you know, we need to keep everybody safe. That includes no running in camp, making sure that you have no open flame or fire, um, that you know, you have a fire pit going, that you are attending your fire pit, and that you have a fire bucket uh, filled with water, ready to go next to it in case of a problem um, arises, you can put it out immediately. We definitely, no personal firearms, we are definitely on top of that. No, no bows, no BB guns, no knives, unless they're for, you know, whittling or whatever, wood-wise, but no machetes, things like that. Hatchets and camp axes are okay. I know this is ha Halloween themed, but you know, we don't need to run around with any machetes, okay? Um, definitely no alcoholic beverages or illegal substances. Sorry, no fireworks of any kind are permitted on camp. Um, and yes, lights out are asked to be at 1030 for everybody's sake, so. Scout spirit, yay! Um, so yes, we are pirate themed. And so we would love to see your pirate costumes. Um, I, I know that you guys are all excited about it and see I've got my hat right here ready to go. So I too am going to dress up as the rest of my team. So please make sure that you come and you know, just the only thing I have to say about costumes is, you know, make sure that they're child friendly appropriate costumes. Um, and then just a reminder, like we said earlier in the safety meeting, most costumes are made with materials that can be quite flammable. So please be careful around your campfires if you're wearing your costumes, okay? Decorating your campsite. Oh, please decorate your campsite. We want to see your Halloween, your pirate themed spirit at your campsites. Um, all the campsites pretty much at BERT have power at them, so you can run your inflatables, you can put on your ghost lights, you know, you can, you know, put up your streamers and everything else possible that you can think of. Um, your cobwebs, you name it, we want to see it. So definitely decorate your campsites for everybody as well as us. Sunday checkout and departure. Aw, time to go home. Uh, units should leave the campsites the way they found them. You know, our rule, you know, uh, leave no trace. So definitely make sure that uh, you pick up everything in your campsite. Um, make sure that you definitely check those bathrooms really good that you used and make sure that the trash is picked up and the floors are swept and, you know, toilets are flushed. Um, make sure that the trash is uh, taken behind the dining hall or there is a dumpster at BERT that is over by the new Woodruff building area. Yes, we have a new building over there now. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, over at Woodruff, we ask that you put your trash behind the dining hall. Um, no one leaves until the small group gives their okay. So. You know, this is to make sure that we don't have a lot of mingling um, going on and, you know, a lot of people trying to leave at the same time and a lot of interaction. So if the whole group can finish up and get everything broken down and put in their cars and, and everything, if they can all just leave at one time, that will minimize, you know, the constant flow of vehicles and stuff going on, you know, in and through camp so that we can keep contact down. So that is checkout. Charla, you're on mute. Honey. I, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is the end of my fancy presentation. I see that we have some questions in the chat. Yes, um, we do. Miss Jamie, if you can start handling some questions and throwing them out there for us. Sure, sure. Okay, so Beth. I apologize about the sounds in the background. My dogs are having a good time playing around, so I apologize for that. 
Um, Beth here says, are buffs and gaiters allowed for face coverings? Uh, they are. We are merely requiring that a face covering is worn at all times. Uh, let's see, Katrina, can you share the website? I know Charity just put that up there a few minutes ago. Um, sorry again about the dogs. Uh, AlanaBSA.org backslash Spooky Re. That is where you need to go for info. Um, Lisa asked, um, are there caps on the total number of people for each weekend? And uh, what is the cap on the small group as well? Sharla, could you answer that one for us? So we're, we actually, um, uh, you know, this is not going to be a 2,000 people a weekend event like it usually is. Um, our numbers are very reasonable and manageable. Um, we're, we're talking several hundred people at any given weekend as opposed to several thousand people. Um, so we, we're not even coming close to reaching the, the cap per se that we put on each weekend. Um, and we're, as far as the small groups go, we're trying to keep those to a, approximately 25 people. All right. Uh, so it looks like um, we have another question about if somebody can't join us until Saturday, what is the protocol? Um, Charlotte, go ahead. Uh, so if you're not going to be joining us until Saturday, uh, travel on the, the gravel roads is closed from 8 to 5, but you can drive on the main paved roads. So when you enter into camp, uh, you should proceed directly to the camp office. That's in the dining, the downstairs of the dining hall at Burt Adams or the nun building at Woodruff. Um, when, check in with the camp staff in the office. They will let you know where your group is currently and they're going to ask you to go park your car in a parking lot and meet up with your group. And then at five o'clock when program activities are done and all the roads open back up again, you can go get your car and move all your stuff into your campsite at that time. Yes. Uh, so it looks like we had a question um, about bringing your own BB gun. Unfortunately, we are going to say no, no firearms, no bows and arrows, bows. Um, we have equipment available for the uh, kids to use, so there's no need to bring your own. Uh, will the scouts be able to do all the shooting or just one? Charlotte? We have all of the shooting sports worked into the various rotations. Um, so they, they will take part in all of the shooting sports. If they're lions, obviously they cannot participate in BB guns. And so we'll have the rubber band gun range set up for them right next to the BB guns. So you can kind of monitor both of them at the same time. Exactly. Uh, so Amy asks, will there be time for fishing? Um, go ahead, Charlotte. I'll let no, you. No, you, you, you were going to say the same thing I was. Unfortunately, we did not work fishing into our plans this year. Um, there's no way to officially keep everyone separated um, and, and ensure that they're not, you know, commingling and, um, you know, grouping up with people outside of their small groups. So unfortunately, fishing will not be available. Uh, and the second half of Amy's question was, there are 12 events. Will we be have enough time to do everything? I can answer, yes, we will. Sorry. <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, it, part of your rotation is set up so that it's 45 minute intervals that you will travel that allows for a certain amount of time for the activity, a certain amount of time for instruction, a certain amount of time for cleaning in that 45 minutes before you hear the buzzer go off over the loud intercom system and then you change to your next event. So there is a morning session which gets you for, through the first six on one side of the camp at BERT and then you'll sit and have lunch and then after lunch is done you will go to the next set of six, which is on the other side of the camp, and you will do your rot rotation there. And the other group will vice versa. Um, the same kind of setup is also at Woodruff. So you have six events in the morning and six in the afternoon, and you, you go through the rotation and you guys all switch. So it is set up so that you will be able to achieve everything. All right. Uh, is firewood available for each campsite? Carla? 
I'll answer that. I'll answer yeah. that. There should be campfire um, wood there, um, but obviously you can bring your own um, to make sure that you have plenty for your cooking needs. Um, also bring some charcoal if you're going to do your campfire bark cooking as well. <laughs> yep. Uh, if you do need firewood while you are there, you just have to let one of us leaders, or you need to let your small group leader know, then your small group leader will let one of us know, or the camp masters or the rangers know, and we will have firewood delivered to, to you. Okay. Um, just to add on to that. Uh, let's see. We currently have 35 people signed up for our pack. We are attending at Woodruff. Is the group still 25 to 50 people? Uh, can we all be at the same campsite? Or we are doing our packed meals together. Uh, Charity, do you wanna? Yeah, so we do have a couple of packs that are actually larger than the 50 numbers. And so the way we're gonna work that is they will be in separate cohort groups as far as going through activities, but we will put them in a campsite where a large pack could still be in there socially di 